Plum Street used to be a neighborhood. In the 70s, it was kind of the Hayton Ashbury of Detroit. Um, and it was full of houses and small businesses and a lot of progressive minded people um, that lived and thrived in this area. And then they built I-75 and raised this and there was a lot of new development downtown like DTE and MGM. Um, so this was after the neighborhood got basically torn up by the highway and all the new stuff that happened. Um, DT took it over as a parking lot um, and then MGM took over the land. So right now we are farming on a giant parking lot. There's literally gravel below our feet. And then we built up these, probably one of the biggest raised bed farms ever. Um, and that's what we farm on in the fields out there. The benefit of coming to Plum Street Market Garden um, has a lot to do with that feeling of relief. I think a lot of people, they, no matter what you do on your day to day, even if it's farming that you do day to day, you walk onto this site and there's this sigh that you can kind of either see or even audibly hear from people who walk on site. Um, because you're around friends, you're around other gardeners who are some of the most amazing people I've ever met. Um, and we're all here for the same reason, right? Um, maybe different minute reasons, but all around we're here as part of a mission towards food sovereignty in the city. As this has been like a hub for Garden Resource Program members to come and pick up resources for education classes. It's a living classroom, right? So there's a field where we plant sweet potatoes and Garden Resource Program members and community members who are interested in learning more about planting sweet potatoes come they help us plant sweet potatoes, they learn how to plant sweet potatoes, we do it together, we laugh together, but also we push each other to learn more about planting sweet potatoes. And then um, gardeners take home that plant to plant at home after having done that work with us. People who choose to volunteer um, at Keep Growing Detroit, um, kind of all over the place in terms of like their experience level with growing produce and um, their experience, you know, gardening, which is great. Um, we, as a farm team, prioritize always having many different kinds of work and many different levels of production happening at the farm. So. Um, there are always beginner level projects that um, people can key into here and then of course there are more advanced projects being demonstrated so um, it's it you know we have spaces for people of all different kinds of experience levels here um, from you know like how do I become more successful in growing that patio tomato to what does it look like when um, I want to build my own greenhouse and do something that's a little more involved. Um, so hopefully, and what we have seen actually, is a wide range of experience levels in our gardeners and the people who volunteer here. Um, also, many different ages have, you know, have been to the farm. So we've had kindergartners here um, just learning about like kind of the magic of what happens to a seed and and what's going on in the soils and what kind of bugs we can get our hands on and um, which ones are beneficial and which ones maybe aren't our friends um, uh, to you know um, older generations who come to the site and are able to pass on some of their experiences um, and things that they've learned over the years. Working for Keep Growing Detroit, every day is different. So as a farmer, you're kind of working in flow with the season. So what you have to do changes depending on the weather, depending on the climate. So right now in uh, the winter or starting of spring, we're just getting ready for the season. Or So we're starting our transplants. We're about to start playing our seeds. And so we fast forward to summer. That's when we're harvesting our stuff. And, also getting ready for our fall harvest and fall plantings. So it's like a flow of work. 
and what you have to do really depends on what you're growing and the types of plant that you're managing and what you have to do for your farm. So it's interesting, since you're working with nature, you're kind of on, you're on nature's schedule so that you have to work based on what the earth is telling you. And then you have to figure out how to, how to read like the signs of the, signs of the world really. Like you're not looking at a paper, you're not making your own schedule here. You're working based on what the plants are telling you and their growth patterns and schedule. The farm is a super accessible place to see nature at work and also in harmony with their life. So the thing that people are, have a disconnect from is their food. And so most of the times we're getting it straight from the grocery store and we don't see where it starts from here. And we've made our space available for them to come in and help with every part of the process, how to seed the plants, how to harvest the plants and how to cook it also. Farming is really hard work. <laughs> it takes, and I think most gardeners will agree, that it takes a certain amount of dedication and a lot of time and energy. Um, and to do it alone um, is a serious undertaking. And one thing that really floats me, and I think the farm staff here, and staff in general, and farmers in the city in general will agree that having many new faces come through and experience something maybe for the first time um, you know I'm planting something today for the first time um, kind of floats you and reinvigorates you and, it, and in general gives me a lot more energy um, to attack the projects day to day so I'm grateful for the number of people that come in on site um, keeps us going keeps us pumped yeah